In the motor effect, we have current flowing through a wire, and this produces a mad field around the wire, and the field around the wire interacts with the field that's already there uh, between the magnets, and that produces a force on the wire, like so. So in this case, we have current and field interacting together to produce motion or force. In electromagnetic induction, is somewhat different. Okay, so here we have an ammeter instead. Okay, so we don't have a power supply. We don't we don't have something that's providing current. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move the uh, wire myself. So I'm actually causing the motion myself, and this is going to induce a current in the wire. Okay, so in the, in the case of electromagnetic induction, we have motion which we're doing. We're pulling or we're moving something, and there's going to be a field that's already present as well. That's similar to uh, a motor effect, and that's going to induce a current. And the induced part is why it's called electromagnetic induction. So how does it work? Let's say we have this magnet here, and you can see I've drawn the magnet field around it like so. And I've got a coil of wire, and it's connected to an ammeter like so. If I move this coil in, see that the ammeter gives a reading. Okay, so why is that? Okay, so when the magnetic field lines go into the coil, there is an increase in flux. So there's a change in magnetic flux linkage. And this induces an EMF. And because it's part of a complete circuit, there's going to be current flowing around the circuit. Okay, so notice how when I'm holding the magnet right next to it, even though there's flux going through it, this field line is going through the coil uh, of the area of the coil, there is no, uh, there's no more reading. This is because there's no change in flux. Okay, so when there's no change in flux or the flux is constant, there is no EMF induced and there's no current. So the key here is there needs to be a change in the magnetic flux linkage going through the coil in order for an EMF to be induced. Now that change can be an increase or a decrease. So when I move this magnet away, the magnetic flux linkage through the coil, the amount of field lines going through the coil is decreasing. So as you saw, there was a reading on the ammeter. So change in magnetic flux linkage, induce an EMF, and if the circuit is complete, current flows through it. So again, the emphasis is on a change. If there's no change, like for example, as I'm holding the magnet away from it, there's no change in flux, there's no EMF induced. Let's see what happens to reading when I do the same change, when I bring the magnet closer, but I'm going to do it faster. Okay, so hopefully you saw the reading on the ammeter was much larger. This is because when the flux changes more quickly, there's a larger EMF induced, and so there's a larger current flowing in the circuit. Okay, we can change the flux through the coil in many ways. For example, if we spin the magnet, you can see there's an increase and then a decrease in the flux and then an increase in the opposite direction uh, because the north and south pole are taking turns. So whenever there's a change in magnetic flux linkage, there's an EMF induced. And if I spin it faster, you can see a large EMF is induced. So whenever there's a rate of change of uh, flux linkage and there's a really fast rate, there's a large EMF being induced when it's inside the coil. But if I hold it stationary, even though there is flux going through it right now, because the field lines are going to go through that, um, that coil, there's no EMF induced because there's no change. So Faraday's law tells us the EMF induced is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. It can be given an equation like this, where the epsilon here is the EMF induced in volts, and then we have the number of turns of the coil, and then delta phi, that represents a change in magnetic flux, and that's measured in Weber's, and then we've got time for that same change in flux. Um, and because the flux can be written as magnetic uh, flux density times area, like so, we can write that as B times A, where B is the magnetic flux density times the area, and the magnetic flux density in Tesla, and the area into the meter squared, and that could be a circle, or it could be a square, and so on. In this example, the diagram shows a metal loop Q, which is 0.04 meters by 0.02 meters attached to a voltmeter. Now, below Q is a coil, which is called R, which is connected to a power supply. When the switch is closed, the magnetic flux density through the loop Q increases to 80 milliteslas in 1.5 milliseconds. Calculate the average reading on the voltmeter. Okay, so let me explain what's going on. So if when I close this switch, like so, there's going to be a magnetic field produced because of the current going through coil R, and that magnetic field is going to go through loop Q. Okay, so there's going to be a rate of change of flux through loop Q, and therefore there's going to be an EMF induced. So we can use Faraday's law to calculate the EMF induced. So number of coils, well, in loop Q, there is only one coil. Okay, so it's just one, the n is equal to one. So the magnetic flux density was uh, going, turning into 80 millitesla, so 80 times to the minus three, times the area, which is 0 0.04 times 0 0.02. And the initial flux through loop Q was zero, when there, there was no magnetic field going through it, zero. So the change in flux linkage 
is just what it is at the end, 80 millitesters times area. Then the time it took to do that was uh, 1.5 milliseconds. So turn that into seconds, and that gives us an induced voltage of 0.043 volts. In this example, we have a bulb that's sitting on some fixed conductors, and there's a metal rod of length L that's going across it like so. And this whole region inside is inside a magnetic field and with a flux density of B, and that's acting into the page. Okay, so I'm going to ask the question, what is going to happen when I move this rod at velocity V towards the right, like so? Watch what happens. Okay, hopefully you saw that the bulb actually turned on. This is because the area where, through which the magnetic field is going was this. Okay, that was where the flux linkage was. And then it increased to this. So the area had increased by this much, basically. So there was a rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. And the length has increased by delta x, like so. So that means the area had increased by L times delta x. Okay, so I can calculate the EMF induced using the Faraday's law. Okay, so because the magnetic flux density B was a constant, I can that's not changing, I can take it out of the equation like so. And also there's no coils, just n is equal to one. So the equation becomes like so. Okay, so the B at the magnetic flux density I took out because it's a constant. The area that's changing is at delta A, and which I just showed you that can be determined by doing delta X times L. So I can write like so. Okay, L is a constant, however, delta X is over delta T. That's actually the velocity. So that part there is V. So we get this really useful equation, which is EMF induced, which is in volts, is equal to magnetic flux density times the length of the conductor um, that's passed moving times the velocity at which the conductor is moving. In this final example, the diagram shows the plane flying horizontally at a speed of 120 meters per second. The magnetic field due to the Earth acts at 35 degrees to the vertical. The magnetic flux density at this height is 0 0.60 milliteslas. The plane has a wingspan of 40 meters. Calculate the EMF induced across the tips of the plane's wings. Okay, so what's going on is they've got the magnetic field going downwards towards the right, and the plane's wings is cutting these field lines, and that's inducing an EMF. So we can use the equation that we just derived a minute ago, BLV. So EMF induced is equal to magnetic flux density, which is 0 0.60 times to the minus 3. That's in millitesla, which I've converted. And then, but however, actually not, we can't use all of that, because not all of that is actually going perpendicular. Um, so the component that we're interested in is a downward component, uh, perpendicular to the plane's wings. So I'm going to have to use cosine 35 in this case. Um, that's adjacent. So cosine 35 degrees, making sure it calculates on degree mode, times the length of the wings band. So that's L 40 meters in this case. And the velocity, which is moving, is 120. And that gives me an EMF induced of 2.39 volts across the wings.